for the Finance Committee meeting for Thursday, June the 29th. Uh, and we will start with an approval of the previous meeting minutes, and I believe we have three yeah, to so approve. <clears throat> if everyone for? Uh, got the email, I sent out a batch of minutes to review because um, I've not been at the one meeting before. Uh, and one of them, just so everyone is clear, one of them is the is the the combined joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen, which includes everything that was discussed in our meeting too. So I think it would be advisable if we approve those as our records too. Yeah, I agree for that meeting. I agree. Um, so the minutes are, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for 518, 527, and 5823 as emailed to members. You mean 427? Yes, sorry. Yeah, 427. 427, 58, and 518. Correct. Okay. I have a motion for approval. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> All right. Any public comment? Hi, Sherry. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Good, good. Um, so we will move into our first agenda item, which uh, I believe, Julie, you will be bringing forth the interdepartment transfers. For the, is that correct? Either you or Brian. I don't. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you want to call him Brian, I will. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, he just might go over his stuff in uh, more detail when I'm done. So um, you'll see on the screen and before you, we have our interdepartment transfers for the end of the year. Um, everything you'll see on the transferred from sign is coming from the health insurance. Um, we talked about it many times, but to reiterate again, we had a great savings in our health insurance this year. Um, Brian worked really hard with our health insurance provider to do a great holiday for two months. Um, and since the town pays 75% uh, of the premium, we saved over $600,000 um, in class. It was closure to seven. So all the transfers to keep things clean and neat are coming from that um, excess in health insurance. And I'll just go down uh, line by line and then again, Brian can explain if there's more detail for um, each line. So the first one is Selectman's budget, the payroll full-time line item. The amount needed is $70,000 and this was due to the select board office hiring a full-time departmental assistant and discretionary select board funding. Uh, the second account is under the accounting department. It's under the payroll full-time line. The amount is $15,500 needed because the accounting office hired a full-time assistant town accountant necessary for the success of the office. The third transfer is going into technology, the digital services line item for $24,000. Um, the reason is for various additional costs in technology, including Chromebooks, laptops, and we also had a changeover to Microsoft Outlook services and some upgrades to our system security. Uh, number four is going into the fire department, the vehicle lease line item for $46,000. Uh, and there was a fire prevention vehicle purchased um, and the accounting has been done differently than in the past where they spread the payment over multiple years. We paid for the full amount um, in this year. So that is that cost. Um, number five is going into the facilities department, the payroll full-time line item in the amount of 190,000 and that's covering the facilities departmental staffing. Number six is also going into facilities, into the equipment maintenance and service line item for the amount of 96,000. And this was for facilities projects that were not budgeted, including the parks, dugouts, new pool facility foundation, gazebo, senior center flooring, etc. Number seven is going into the parks and rec department, the payroll full-time line item. It's the only line item in that department, and that's why it's over. Uh, the amount is $5,300 um, due to an increase that was not uh, originally budgeted for the park director for the current year, FY23. That is not the change for the town meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, number eight um, is the $100,000 um, that we worked to appropriate for the school at the beginning of the year. And they are um, spreading it between three different line items. 
Um, they're putting $63,415 into the Wood School Teacher Salaries, $10,560 into the Special Ed Assistance for the Jackson School, and $26,025 into the Contracted Services for Special Ed. Um, and again, this was supplemental funding that we had uh, at the beginning of the year that we helped them put toward um, reinstituting the band program, um, hiring some reading specialists, and a social and emotional counselor. Uh, number nine is going to the school as well. Uh, $21,750 into the supply security line item. Um, and this is for the physical security audit, including recommendations for improvements. And the final, uh, number 10, is going into the school textbooks, materials, reading for the Jackson School in the amount of $45,000. Um, and that is the match for the DESE curriculum grant that they received this year. The total that we're transferring is $613,550. Um, and as part of the interdepartmental transfers, the select board has to approve these as well as the finance committee and the select board did approve these in full as presented to you on Monday. Kim. We'll open up for questions from the committee. So, Joe? Um, first of all, great job on the insurance. That's just fantastic that we were able to free up that kind of money. It seems to be my hobby. Isn't it? It's a great <laughs> hobby. You, yeah. you should keep that up. We, 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 we want to encourage that in any way that we can. That's so we're fantastic. trying to bring a little bit better value to our employees at the same time that we're bringing savings to the taxpayer. So we had been securing our health insurance through Southeastern Massachusetts Health Group. Um, we had a disagreement with them about the application of reserves. Their documents specified that they could hold 13% of the money in reserve, they were holding 56% of the money in reserve. So um, after a long discussion, they finally decided to bring it down to 23%, still below what I think they should have been. Their refusal to apply by their own documents and um, basically return uh, to the town and to the employees their, their share, we broke off with uh, North Attleboro. So we're now in the North Attleboro uh, Plainville Health Group. And we have our own plan. In addition, um, we were able to bring uh, some changes to the plan. We never had an FSA, flexible spending account. So we were able to bring that to the employees under the new program. And while we always had a high deductible with an HSA option, we only had one person taking advantage of it now. In this next go-round, it's 35. Yes. This saves the employee money, and this saves the town money. And there are additional things that we will be looking at that will change not only the offering to health insurance, you know, health insurance to our employee without changing the contributory share. So the employee does have to change the contributory share, but bring a little more value to the employee and some savings to the taxpayer at the same time. We'll also recalculate our OPEP liability. So we'll be looking at further changes next year on that. Not to be confused with the memo you got this afternoon, which talked about the savings in our uh, general uh, property and casualty insurance and our workers' compensation insurance. will be the mm -hmm. second year in a row that we have uh, camped on Maya's doorstep about doing things a little differently. Um, one of the things that we had done last year was had them relook at their the property values uh, because they um, were all over the road. Some were replacement, some were um, just arbitrary, so we've got that. We Some cars, some of our automobile policies had 500 deductibles, some had 1,000, so we changed them all. So we've got consistency and then the biggest mistake that they made is the calculation of our mod factor or workers' comp. Uh, and again, they did that this year, so we were able to correct that. So, so Brian, on the health insurance, was that the IBNR that they adjusted? Uh, the, that's part of it. Um, but the problem is they were still pulling too much into reserve uh, from the from the uh, the, the health savings. <coughs> in addition, they weren't passing the. the 
<coughs> additional benefits that are available under Blue Cross Blue Shield mm -hmm. um, to the employee, including the, the concierge desk when you have a problem, you can call and have uh -huh. concierge. They weren't passing that on. So it was not only IBN and R, but this was multi multi pronged. There were multi so many things that needed to change. Mm -hmm. And my concern was the we only were one vote on SMHG. Um, and we were outnumbered because th that's what they wanted to do. And, and I think health insurance for most people is scary and overly complex. And so there was a reluctance to make changes. Mm -hmm. So the advantage of doing it with another partner, I needed a partner with similar plans, similar loss ratios. And as you know, Mark, I need a number of about a thousand people in the plan. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. didn't have a thousand people, but together, North Attleboro and Plainville have a thousand people, in fact, 1,200. So consequently, I needed their size, they needed our loss ratios, so mm -hmm. it's a very good marriage between yeah. the two. Now we are one of two votes. We have a lot more influence on how our health group will be managed. We've also formed the Insurance Advisory Committee, which is a member of every single collective bargaining agreement that we have so we're bringing the unions along with us mm -hmm. so that when we make changes they are part of the solution and, and in very up to date on, on what's going on with the policy and we're encouraging the employees themselves to be more involved um, one of the concerns that, and we all feel the same way I, we like the insurance plan we have because we understand it we don't think I don't think that we can stay stagnant in our choice of health providers forever. That unlike when our parents did health insurance, they had master medical or major medical for you know twenty years, and it didn't go up that much each year. Mm -hmm. and, you know that, that's those days are over. Um, health insurance is going to be a continual war, and that we will be going out to bid, and we will be shopping every two or three years for an insurance provider. This, um, uh, this time we picked Blue Cross Blue Shield primarily because that's what we had before and I don't want to shake up the employee crowd too much by making radical changes and dramatic. But if we were to go out to bid, for example, in the future, we might switch health plans in the future. But with the advice and consent of the people who are in the plan, Okay, that's great. Joe, anything else? That was, that was it. Okay. All right, Chris? Uh, line number four, $46,000 for the fire prevention vehicle. Yeah. Can you elaborate which vehicle or vehicles that is? Yes, the fire prevention officer, the Captain Olson, has always had a vehicle the department and then it's replaced on a rolling basis based on mileage and age most often passed down there, there are four cars in the department uh, chief deputy chief fire prevention officer in the transportation vehicle so they're going to and from classes going to and from the academy so they tend to stay in uh, and as they get older and pass down with higher mileage or they start having too much maintenance we roll the car um, the, in the past, they had bought the new car out of the fire prevention revolving fund. Um, but what they would do is buy the car over a three or four year period, depending upon the revenue stream for the fire prevention fund. The problem I have with it is twofold. The interest rates have gone up on, on buying a car that way, and I don't want to do it that way. Two. Um, you can't buy something unless you have the money, meaning the appropriation. And they were expecting the, they were projecting what the fire prevention fund would have in it over the course of the, the loan, but the money wasn't actually in evidence. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. So there was a little miscommunication um, between myself and uh, fire chief about uh, how we procure an automobile and what the rules are. This is what they always had done, therefore they did it again. Um, that's not how we do it uh, now. We will follow the rules. Thank so you. what we're doing here is paying for the car so there's no financing. The fire prevention fund will regenerate over the three or four years of life uh, that we would assign to that vehicle. 
uh, for use as fire prevention. And then either we will take the money back to the general fund or that's how they will buy the next car, but that will be a town meeting vote that will not be automatic. And at least, to be honest with you, at that point, we have a funding source. Thank you. Uh, two more questions. Line number five. Uh, payroll for the facilities department staffing. Can you elaborate what that will cover? Sure. Uh, you'll recall back on the 25th of July um, last year, we created the facilities department. Um, and at that point in time, um, we had outlined a plan of how we were going to move a little bit from this fund and a little bit from this fund and a little bit from over here. And we would get to the $200,000 mark. Um, because this, for, for two reasons, one of which is while we could still do that, this was a cleaner transfer. The money exists here. There's an easier trail for transparency that somebody following, well, what did you do at the end of the year? Where did the money come from and where did it go? Instead of taking from five different accounts, sure. we just took it from this account. So the, the accounts that we were gonna take it from still have a balance, that will just simply flow to free cash. Excellent. Uh, final question, line number eight, uh, with respect to the school, I, I understand the teacher salaries, I understand the special education and the contracted services in the reason column. Uh, there's a comment about the reinstitution of the elementary band. Uh, can you elaborate out of this $100,000, how much of that is going to the band? Uh, I, I am probably not a good person to talk about okay. how the school allocates their funds. Well, we they, the, we saw the money coming in from Thermal Fisher just a little sooner than we had originally projected. And one of the biggest concerns we had when we adopted the school budget at the last town meeting was the inability to restore the band. Yep. This was the most requested thing. This is one of those things that's a competitive standard between schools, to, you know, do, they, do we have a band? So we were able to identify that there was a source of funds for the $100,000. We went to the schools and said, if we if we could give you $100,000 from uh, New Growth early, could you restore band? They said, not only could we restore band, which I believe is the Wood salary, Wood School teacher okay. salary, they they needed some special education assistance and they had a problem for contracting <coughs> services, so they used 36,000, 30 almost 36 and a half thousand for those two purposes and then the 63 for the for the hiring of the band instructor and i must admit to you that i the day after town meeting we you know i was invited to the band concert at the elementary school and the last time i have been to an elementary school band when, when my own children were in the elementary school band i had thought that it was a great idea to send them to guantanamo <laughs> and i would confess to anything uh, to have them stop this band concert was fantastic and in a very short period of time 64 kids in the band and they put on a first class presentation and i was very proud i was very pleased to have then been a part of it and the parents knew uh, what had occurred here to get the band back up and running and i was quite pleased to to have parents coming and saying thank you to the town for you know, getting this done and doing it a little early because otherwise it would have waited until this budget year to put it back. And then we would have lost that opportunity for those 64 kids in the band. And they put on one heck of a show. And if, if you get a chance next year, I'll let you know when they're gonna do it again. You should go to this thing. It was great. Bring popcorn, bring family members, it was awesome. Thank you. I am fully in support of the elementary band. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. <clears throat> Crystal, my question about blowing the school budget into three separate items detailing what was in there. Um, but I do have one question about the uh, the increase in the technology and the digital services line item three. Which number was that, sir? Three. Three, yes. Yeah. Um, just what are the, I, I know. It says additional costs, including Chromebooks, laptops. Where are those going specifically? The Chromebooks are going to the Council on Aging. Okay. It's $4,000 worth yep. of Chromebooks. The majority, the vast majority of the 24000 is the change from Google 
to Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Office, um, Office 365 for a multitude of reasons. One, we're a real business and I couldn't deal with, I mean, if I was at school, you, you want to be on Google. Yep. Um, that's the, the standard, but we're not. And I need spreadsheets, I need up-to-date you know, Microsoft Office 365, and there is a security component to that that was much more attractive. Um, so the majority of that expense was the switch to 365. The license specifically? Licenses, okay. yeah. And that's a recurring cost now, but it is in the operating budget. Okay, that's all. Thank you. David? Um, Crystal? I just have one question. Line item six for the facilities projects, does this include the Field of Dreams? Is that what you mean when you say the dugouts? Yeah, okay. the dugouts. Okay. Have you been up to see the dugouts? I haven't yet. No. They are especially proud of those. I'll have to check it out. And that was a joint effort from DPW and facilities mm -hmm. uh, to pour the foundation uh, and to transport. They actually built them down at the highway garage and then transported okay. them uh, and painted them and put them in. Um, we're going to be spending a lot more time and money on Field of Dreams. Um, it's one of our few recreational facilities in town. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in town meeting, we voted to do a plan for upgrading. Uh, this, this is where we're going to put some more time and some more money. Sure. That's great. Thank you. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Yes. Did you get a chance? Okay. Um, it was hard to ask questions on Monday night, so. Um, I was wondering if um, it might be possible to clarify what the discretionary select board funding was, both in terms of dollar amount and what it paid for. Doesn't pay for anything as yet. The select board has the ability to create a discretionary bonus for the town administrator, and that has not been settled yet. Okay, thank you. Um, also, I was wondering, um, since you're moving to a purchase model for um, the fire prevention vehicle, would it make sense? I think the, the description of the account is still vehicle lease. Is that something you're going to look to change, or is there a reason that you're leaving it as a vehicle lease we're, we're buying the lease out. So they have put it in as a lease, and we're taking it out. Okay. But you're going to pay it in that line item. Correct. It's technically the buyout of a lease, right. so it's in the right spot. So going forward, will that change over to a vehicle purchase account? No, I'll probably just leave it as a lease, because whatever we do with a vehicle, I, you know, whether it's a lease or a purchase, you know, I don't need to rename the account as long as I state the purpose. But I have to be honest with you, at lease rates right now, we're not going back there. Yep. Yeah. We'll, we'll, no, you know, no. when, when an opportunity where, or when a demand is required to do another vehicle for the fire department, which I will be quite a while, that'll be a town meeting vote, it'll be a part of the capital budget, the funding source might be the revolving fund. So. Uh, mm. Which revolving fund? the fire prevention revolving fund. So consequently, um, you wouldn't use that line. Again, yeah. that line now is zero. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, and if you don't mind, one more question. Sure. Um, you just, uh, Mr. Noble, you just referenced that um, you have already secured some additional savings uh, in uh, like building insurance and stuff for, I'm assuming, fiscal 24. Yes. Do you happen to know what the comparison is between the budgeted amounts of those? Fifty-five thousand dollars savings. So that's for fiscal twenty-four. Yes. Wow. Fifty-five is that the right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Because part of the problem is when you put together the budget and you're still arguing with them, you put the worst case scenario in because got to cover. Mm -hmm. And um, I was still arguing with them until today. This is the same thing that happened last year. It was about this time last year that I finally settled with them. Um, I have, um, we, we continue to go back to our largest items of expense and see what we can do to get a better value or reevaluate what we're doing. Um, so this year, while we won't probably see the, the big savings in health insurance, like that's a big deal, uh, and, we, and, we, and we did that. Our savings in the future, you know, on the line items remaining is going to pale in comparison to the gross dollar amount that we were able to do in health insurance, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop. So we have actually, I have hired um, insurance consultants who will start uh, next uh, the 11th of July 
uh, on next year's insurance policies already, reviewing the market, the policies we have, the, the values assigned, so that we know that we shop the best possible uh, option for the town. Yeah, we just got our property first pass and it was a shock. <laughs> Well, the problem so, that I always have the big argument with them is the valuation of the buildings. And they, you know, they did the appraisal of the school, and I pointed out that they had the land value in the appraisal. Well, if the building burned to the ground, I still own the land. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to rebuy the land, so take that out of the value. Yeah. So that's the continuing argument that yeah. they put these things in, and I wonder, to be honest with you, how many people just say, okay. So most probably so okay. any other questions then so i'm assuming we have to take this to vote of the committee right yes okay so i will ask for a motion for approval of the interdepartment transfers as of june for june 2023 i'll make that motion nobody else says second second all in favor aye, aye. aye. motion passes <clears throat> And I guess I have to sign that at some yes, point, sir, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, you probably don't want it in red ink. I don't mind. <laughs> All right. So moving on to the agenda, there's a couple of items that I put on here. One of them, and the first one we're going to talk about, is just kind of a, a bit of a review from the town meeting. <laughs> You know um, things that that went well you know but I'm really you know kind of a little bit more focused on what we need to do as a committee going forward into next year I mean, you always start planning for next year's budget because it'll be here before we know it you know and things that you know we as a committee feel like we could do to improve that for next town meeting so I've got a few ideas, but I will hold those and I will turn it over to the committee. I know, David, you sat and we'll probably start there. You'd send some thoughts to us around some of the things that you thought, um, you know, that we could do to improve. So I can turn it over to you. And then, you know, I'd like to have this as an open dialogue. So I yes. have a question before we do that. Um, the email that he sent to us, he sent to all of us, which I believe we have to have that email has to go into the as long as you don't respond to it you didn't violate the open email. okay thank you that was my question good so i would like to have it as an open dialogue so you know feel free to feel free to kind of jump in you know and so david i can turn it over to you with uh with your thoughts okay thank you so as the newest member of fincom and and uh it, it, i thought it was i thought the meeting went well um and everybody has a copy of this i don't know if we put it up on the if we have the ability to put it up on the board for those who are watching working on it okay <laughs> i'll keep mind. stalling i, I um, had it a minute ago is that, i had a, num a number of thoughts most of it is I, I picked up from questions that were being asked routinely that maybe there's a little bit more that we could do on on the prep nothing major but like there were several requests for the prior year budget figures. So I thought it may make sense if we put in three years of budget figures on tables so people can actually see what it is what and how the those items are growing. And rather than wait until the spring and we start to put it together, maybe we start, if we're gonna do that, we just start to knock those tables off sooner so that when the time comes, it's a very light lift. Yeah. And I think that's going to be something that we will tie into item 3.3 .3 mm -hmm. okay. as we start beginning to do budget reviews on an ongoing basis. Yep. Right. I think we're going to actually know that. I, I, I agree with you, you know, and one of the things that, you know, I, I think when the actual omnibus budget gets presented or whatever, one of my thoughts on it was doing a waterfall from things that are different from this fiscal year to next fiscal year. You know, if it's inflation, if it's, you know, I don't know how much you can do around union increases and stuff like that, you could probably do as a group, you know, but really start beginning to kind of do a waterfall that shows where the budget is either 
increasing or decreasing on a year-over-year -year basis. And I think that would be important to outline that when that particular article is being presented. No, oh, that's quite all right. Um, I think it might be wise if we added a screen, if possible, that that the folks who are up front can actually see. Like right now, we have the screens in front of us. No, can't do it. Can't do it. The school does not have that technology, and neither do we. Okay, so let's skip that one. And it's very annoying. We really do need a better facility for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I know we go through a lot of paper. In preparing it and the handouts and that sort of thing and it, it uh, if there is an easy way to estimate what the costs are for all the printed materials especially the booklets for those there, there seem to be a number of people who are concerned about how much we're spending in various areas maybe it would be nice if people brought if they understood how much we might save if folks brought iPads they can view it on their iPad take it home with them and we're not wasting all that paper we print 300 of the booklets we print them in-house um, so they're relatively inexpensive. Um, the big expense this year, because of the sheer size of it, was the town report. Um, and I'm not sure how many people pick up the hard copy when they see it's War and Peace. Um, and we're working on maybe making that book a little thinner next year by maybe not including re repetitive things uh, mm -hmm. in it. Like, we had the warrant, then we had the warrant with the motions, and then we had the warrant with the results. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to do the warrant with everything in it, so that would cut down, you know, 30 or 40 pages, which would make a difference. Um, but the, I estimate the, the, the cost of this to be not terrible, but the cost of the town report in time and paper um, was probably roughly about five bucks a book. And how many books? We did 300 books. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not sure that we even need 300 books anymore. There is no statutory requirement that you... There's no statutory requirement that it is printed. It has to be Only available. that it's created. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. And it is on the website. Uh, well, in fact, everything that we did for town meeting uh, is on the website and was on the website very early in the game. And some people did bring, I, I noticed yep. some people did bring printed yep. out copies. So maybe we encourage that and yeah. cut, yeah. print it down by two thirds. Yes. My only concern with that would be there's a lot of folks that might not have that use of technology. So we definitely need to have a good amount available yeah. the, for that population too. The, um, the nice part about the town report is if we ran out of town reports at town meeting, you right. can. It's on the website, or you could stop at town meeting and pick it up. You don't need it for tonight. Right. Mm -hmm. If I ran exactly. out of these, exactly. I would be executed. Mm -hmm. So we do tend to print too many of these um, because it could go the other way. And if somebody shows up at town meeting, they're going to expect a warrant. Right. Um, yeah. So we do tend to, I ran, I ran 300 of them. We brought 300 over, and I probably came back with about 50 or 60 of them. That makes sense. Um, yeah. I can't seem to part with them. They're sitting in my office. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's coming. Yeah. Fourth um, of July barbecue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think we're trying desperately to make the warrant more legible, easier to understand, and and this will evolve as we come up with better mm -hmm. ideas to do things. Yeah. I like some of the. I mean, some of the comparison ideas, some of the uh, explanation articles that you put in here we could easily put in um, to be honest with you I don't like to send out a blank page it really kills me to do that which is why the the Board of Health is in here and the uh, recreation is in here um, we did do the appropriation by sector which some people love um, so I mean we try to put some analysis in um, I just want to make the thing too long but I don't want to make you know too short and, Miss an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you want me to just keep going down the list? That's or? perfectly fine. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, that's okay. fine. Um, uh, for when we're having high inflation, I think it would be wise if we include some sort of references to where, what inflation was. We had some pushback from a few residents about the increase in costs. And I grabbed my phone and looked it up. And when I looked at how much inflation was over the past year, 
all of a sudden the increase in cost wasn't as big of a deal. Um, and I think that gives it a more of a relative understanding of the increase in real dollars. Uh, I remember there was some discussions around some of the town projects and um, most of my comments have to do with what I noticed from folks who were getting up to the microphone. So maybe we should just have a, a little bit more robust discussion on some of the upcoming projects and the anticipated costs um, since those questions seem to be cropping up anyway. We're gonna, if we're gonna have to address it, if we address it up front, it may make it, may make the whole process smoother and faster. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I think with that, I think as a, and as a committee, and that's why I think as we get on toward the fall, we're gonna be talking about what our budget meetings are going to be, because I kind of think, even though we, I, I think we hit the timeline probably better this year than the year before you know i still think that we as a committee need time to kind of take what is going to come forth as the articles and really be able to i think instead of uh, coming to you know saying that you know we recommend it is being able to put some context around some of these when we're actually as a finance committee recommending these articles i don't understand what you just said i'm sorry so, so when you know, when it comes to, when the article gets presented, you know, we as a finance committee, you know, we'll go up and say, we as a finance committee recommend this particular article, right? Mm -hmm. There are some of those articles that I really feel like we probably should have put a little bit more context to from a finance committee standpoint. And what I'd like to be able to do for this next year is be able to figure out which ones those are and so that we're better prepared and probably can actually you know, um, get ahead of some of the questions that may have come up if we are actually able to explain some of that. In the um, five years I've been involved in this process now, no matter what you say, Reed Webster is going to point out that you went more than two and a half percent over because he doesn't have a basic understanding of what that two and a half. And I <coughs> love and respect Mr. Webster. It's not, I'm just saying, since yeah. he's mentioned it. In, uh, and there's certain questions that get asked every year by people where the question's been asked and answered. Um, it is good if we're better prepared. I'm all for yeah. that. But it's not going to. If, if, if the reason that we're doing that is that he doesn't get up and point out the, the percentage that he perceives, um, that, that's not going to happen. He is still going to get up and say, I thought you can only raise it 2.5%. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, but what we do need okay. to... Do um, I agree? I think sometimes it's appropriate just to say we rec we we go along with this. Other times we might need to tell why. Yeah. We, you know, especially where we're the third. Okay, on this, it came from the department. It's gone through the selectmen, mm -hmm. and we're agreeing with the department yeah. and the selectmen, um, and we're basically the the voice of the voter before the voter, saying you know we. We think you should do this. Yes, I, I, I don't disagree with that. I think that there's, you know, I, I do think that there are articles. When I go back and look at these, there are probably some that we could have done a better job with that, being able to explain and stuff. I, you know, number one, I will tell you, Article 3, when I presented the budget, I'm sitting there going, we need a waterfall that shows inflation is this, raises are this, you know, we added this to this department or whatever, and really show where that, where those dollars are going to be moving to, right? You know, but and, like on an earlier piece where we're talking about showing a three-year, like over the last three years, we've taken, for example, the toner. We took it out of all these departments. It's now part of this budget. There's things that used to be in all these other budgets. It's now facilities. Right. Yep. Uh, yep. You can't show a three-year comparison because for the last two years that didn't exist. Now it does. <laughs> um, and and we did explain. It. And the thing is, we explain it as we go through this process on a weekly basis before town meeting mm -hmm. we where we do explain it and then we still get the same yeah question right but at town meeting we got 250 people showing up or 240 in light of the fact that uh, 60 of the books came back we don't have 240 that show up here i think i'm sort of smack dab in the middle of both of you i think that <clears throat> while i agree that I would like to have uh, 
more in, more uh, oomph behind what we're saying at town meeting. I think that sometimes, like Joe points out, okay. adding more information without its context, right. which is very difficult mm -hmm. to do during that one night situation. Mm -hmm. And that's not what that night's for. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I actually thought of this for last town meeting and this town meeting. Instead of having our standard letter where we say, we've done this many meetings, this is what we've reviewed, this is how we feel about things going on, I think that instead of inserting ourselves more into town meeting when sometimes we don't necessarily need to do that, mm -hmm. what we can do is go more in depth on the letter that we craft. And Brian, that does not necessarily mean more work for you. Uh, <laughs> it's our job. Yeah, and, <laughs> and to go, if we're actually recommending something, I think we should have a brief paragraph of explanation explaining why we're recommending it. Now that doesn't need to be, obviously something like the operating budget will be a little bit longer, mm -hmm. but I yeah, think to yeah. Joe's point, that doesn't mean explaining three years worth of context and saying the facilities budget went from here to here to here. Yeah. That's, our, that's our job. Better presenting our recommendation, I think will be critical. So that when mm -hmm. we say the finance committee recommends, you can refer back to our letter, or we can even say the finance committee recommends, please refer to our recommendation on page blank yeah. of our letter or something yeah. like that. It yeah. doesn't need to be 20 pages, but a little bit longer, less involvement on the actual, or similar or less involvement on the actual night of town meeting than currently thought, I think would actually serve both purposes that you guys are talking about pretty well. So I'd be in favor of doing something similar more to that. Yeah. Which I think, you know, with us being able, and, and again, we'll figure out from a timing standpoint when we need to have these these kind of done we as a committee are going to need time to actually go through that yep. that'll be a collaborative effort and really determine which ones it makes sense yep and really kind of what that letter does i, I don't disagree with that yep. maybe that letter has the waterfall piece of it, it already that's in exactly like, how i envision you know it, and like. really instead of a one pager it's a four page yep. but it really hits the things that are the real differences in that year's budget Right, and when it comes to the when it comes to the actual packet that you're getting, I think that makes more sense than adding section more sections on information mm -hmm. that most people are not going to be sifting through to get. The people who will sift through to get it will get it mm -hmm. from the online source when they have it. Yeah. But I, I, like I said, I agree with both of the main points that you're making. Mm -hmm. So, good, good conversation. Uh -huh. um, just along the same lines, there, there was, as I recall, there was um, some questioning about some of the user fees, like the trash collection issues. And we've had growth in the town, as I understand it, from the number of residents, which means the fact that some of these budgets went up, well, we may be serving more people who are paying for them. So even if it went up by a lot of money, if it's user fee driven, it's not as big of a deal. It's the, and I, right. I think trying to, um, as I, as whatever the comment was that night that caused me to to jot that note down. I, rem I remember thinking that it would have been nice if we could have said, well, last year we had this many, and this year we have this many, and that's one of the reasons why it went up. So it may not have been as big of a number. It may have gone up by X amount by people, but we have more households in paying more taxes. So in the particular case of the trash account, that was a change in five years of trash at the same price for five years. Nothing stays the same for five years. So when we went out to rebid, it jumped a lot. And I think that no matter what you did, that's going to shock somebody. Yep. Um, the Facebook, of course, you know, went berserk with the trash fees. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Did we have a single question on that line item at town meeting? We had the question um, from a gentleman who questioned, well, what was last year? Right. The problem with comparing enterprise funds is the retained earnings, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's take an easier one. Water rates went up 8%. So of course the revenue number is going to be 8% higher. But also we did water projects that reduced the retained earnings. So I'm not sure, other than creating more questions about, well, why did these numbers change so dramatically? The revenue went up 8%, and that year we did more projects, therefore retained earnings went down. Um, 
so people tend to confuse you know the enterprise funds with let's say a typical uh, financial statement where your owner's equity should be going up every year if your revenue went up you should be obviously more profitable therefore your retained earnings or your owner's equity should be increasing that is not the case with enterprise funds and i'm not sure i I'll, you know we'll have a secondary document that we will have here's the comparison of the enterprise funds but i think that's going to evoke more questions well what changed uh, what changed was what projects we did um so i think we get into too much of the micro you okay. know when you get into that and my concern is i don't want to drag all of town meeting down for mm -hmm. the one question i would you know really like eventually to put the enterprise funds into the consent agenda because they are what they are the trash got a lot of attention this year because of the trash fee and i thought deb did a very good job explaining yep. mm -hmm. you know the other concern i have and we we got the same question about you know well it went up more than two hundred percent one it's not a tax it's a service that we provide trash went up when we did trash originally there were 32 independent vendors uh, we got bids from more than five I think when last time when we did this five years ago the Board of Health didn't raise rates every year to build the retained earnings so consequently when they decided to go out to bid again instead of the, the vast number of vendors we had we only had uh, seven on the state bid list um, five of which were uh, you know willing to respond to us and of that several are owned by the same company um, so in essence only three independent companies one refused to bid uh, the other two did and we went with the company that happens to now own el harvey um, and of course five years flat it's going to go up and then we changed the trash program so we have the bins instead of the that's primarily to reduce the rodent and pest problem. So there was a philosophical change, a cost change, and change. So it caused an awful lot of problems. What I would really encourage the Independent Board of Health to do is to raise the rates slowly over the period of the contract, build the retained earnings, so that when we adopt a new trash contract, the cliff is not so great because you could buy down the rate with the extra retained earnings you have in the account. And Unfortunately, I think, sense. Dave, that's not yeah. going to happen next yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, even if that we even if that had gone up, if they'd have been raised, you know, every year, there was still like just go out in the market, like it was still going to be a sticker shock of an increase, even if those rates have been raised every year just the, the nature of the beast that, that we're in right now so all right David um, trying to look at what I have here I, I, I thought what what happened with the ambulance was great right so we paid cash for the ambulance I think we could have gotten for lack of a better term we could have milked that for a little bit more Good PR. I'm sorry good PR, Good PR. yeah I mean yeah. I that that was there was there was some questions you gave a quick explanation about we paid cash for it but i think it would have helped if you if for the those who were the budget hawks for them to have understood here's how much money we save next year in debt service by doing this and over the five years here's how much we saved in interest so this isn't just you know we took the money out of here and we paid cash for it by retiring it it, it improves our cash flow over the next five years no debt service I agree. and no interest cost I agree. Um, and, and Brian, I thought you did a great job on pointing out, um, you pointed to $5 million worth of grants. That's a sizable amount of money. And then if you look at our budget, which if I recall, was 40 something, right. Well, and then we had money that was going into various funds that I still don't, I'll learn over the next year, but don't fully understand. But if you take that 43 million or so, of the budget and then you pull out what we put aside into the funds which is kind of like savings now it's not 43 it's a much lower number well the operating budget is still 40 okay mm -hmm. so the yeah. revenue number coming in the 911 uh, the nine hundred and eleven thousand dollars was the remaining unspent free cash yep. so that's what was put into the you know essentially credit stabilization account 
yep. um, savings, if you will. Yep. We've built our general stabilization to 6% of the, that's the recommended, record number is five. And there's no limit to what you can put aside. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no, and no rating agency is gonna blame you for having more money in reserve. <coughs> you know, that, that actually is to your credit. But we wanted to show that, you know, okay, we've taken care of general stabilization. We have the gaming stabilization, which funds the mortgage on the uh, municipal buildings, which comes in from the, the casino. Mm -hmm. Now we have this third stabilization account, 911, which will be capital stabilization. Mm -hmm. So in the either years where we don't have the free cash to buy a piece of equipment that we need, police cruiser, fire vehicle, DPW vehicle, et cetera, we still will have a fund of money. It would also be available for debt service in a bad year. Um, and so we'll see. Um, our goal is to make sure that we're ready in the future for rules on schools. Um, I mean, we have a 147 page document on the capital budget. Um, so we have projects lined up for the next 10 years. Some we'll be able to do because we'll have the money, some we'll have to borrow from, and some we'll have to postpone mm -hmm. entirely or find another way. Um, so, but we need to start putting some money uh, aside, which is the point of, uh, of the, some of the speakers at town meeting, they wanted more money put aside. I think we're doing the right thing. Uh, I, I think you're, from what I've seen so far in the li limited time I've been involved, it seems like the town's finances are being well managed. Thank you. That's so. all truly right here. Um, so the point on the, the number eight was, I, I think it, um, there were $5 million in grants we got last year, right? That's a, that's a lot of money. And, and I don't know that there was an appreciation of how impactful that is to the budget and how much it allows us to put money aside for future things. Because if we didn't have those grants, we'd probably be having to make cuts. We wouldn't be creating the kind of free cash that we're no. creating because basically you get a grant, you supplant what was budgeted. Right. Um, there's a pro and a con to this, it's cyclical. We had ARPA, we had CARES Act, we had, uh, uh, sorry? FEMA uh, that came in because of COVID and, and some of those are still lagging in and still money available. As they reassigned, some communities didn't use it, so now we can apply for their money and get it. Um, also, you know, new department heads are much more motivated to, to fill out, and, and of course we're using that as part of our review standard for department heads. What did you apply for? I'm not gonna penalize them for failure to get one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to penalize them for failure to try. Um, I'd like to, and, and every department head last year in particular had really made a concerted effort, and I, it obviously shows. Yep. Um, but we've had years that the only grant we got was like $160,000, and in the last three years uh, of the town's existence, it's steadily gone up to, last year was a record 5.7 million. I, I must admit that there's a title of a movie, this may be as good as it gets. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'll hit 5.7 million in FY24. Mm -hmm. um, I'd sure like to try. And, and I think probably the last one I had was just um, uh, maybe at each FinCom meeting we we explain one financial term and go over it for the audience, also for my benefit, because what we, we're talking about things that um, for anybody who's not in the public sector the stabilization funds and the different types of funds, it's unique, and it's unique to municipal finance. Yeah, it is. Any, any others on the list? Anyone wants to discuss? I'll give you discuss? one day that everybody gets confused. A free cash is neither free nor cash. <laughs> <laughs> Which we say over and over again, but yeah. they still have the same question. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think they should come up with another name for it. <laughs> so, Committee, any comments, thoughts? Nope. I mean, worthwhile exercise for us to, for a performance improvement for us for next year, right? Relatively or relatively new board. You shouldn't beat yourself up too badly. I think you did great. Um, 
So, you know, there's always room for improvement. There's room for improvement on the warrant. There's room for improvement on how we do things um, generally. Uh, part of it is required, in my opinion, for we do an awful lot of rehearsal for town meeting. All of these meetings from January until May when the budget is set are televised. And mm -hmm. now that we have money to drop the paywall as of July 1st, this should help. We have no idea how to track the Nielsen rating on how we're doing in terms of getting people to watch, but the information is there. Uh, we'll try to do more putting our videos onto Facebook because it's our content now. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we can put it onto Facebook, that makes it more accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important for our people to see that. We did the dry run through with the moderator um, and the finance committee and the board of selectmen. That's live on the air. and We try to promote that on the website and on uh, the cable site. So I think we do, um, you know, a tremendous amount more than, frankly, most towns do, uh, in getting the word out about what is town meeting. Um, and I think if you look at our warrant compared to three years ago, it's far more legible and understandable. Agreed. Chair, you had a comment. Yeah, I had a thank you for the um, I just wanted to uh, affirm that the warrant is fantastic in terms of all the information it includes. I like the idea of including more explanatory material. Um, I think rather than putting a letter, I can melding it in with the articles as they come up would be wonderful, and I think that's an excellent way to provide the information without taking up fair space at the meeting. Um, I found it somewhat ironic that David has in here. It would be nice to anticipate questions, having been one of those people that was standing up asking questions. I actually had submitted a very key question um, two weeks in advance, saying, I'm going to ask this question if it doesn't get answered, and it didn't get answered, and so I asked it. Um, it's th this, I mean, if I could have a, this moment with the select board, it would be probably more appropriate, but since you are asking, um, there were a number of things that were said that were going to happen. For example, it was said at the um, run-through that the slides that were presented up on the screen for us to read were going to be what people were actually saying. That was specifically stated. But then when we got to town meeting, it was the same exact information that was in the warrant because maybe nobody else remembers that conversation, but there, I remember it because I was like, that would be really great because it would be nice to actually see the motion that's being read, but that wasn't how it worked. The other thing that was very surprising along a similar vein was usually the budget has in it the funding sources listed out as part of the motion, and this, I think, is the first year or possibly the second year that the funding sources weren't actually listed in the motion. They were put up on a slide, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of confusion generated on that. And somebody actually asked a question, where is the information that you're current, currently reading? And the, the reality was it actually wasn't anywhere in the warrant. There were a couple of people saying, oh, it's here, it's there. It wasn't actually anywhere. There were variations of that theme, but the actual, like, here's where this is going to, you know, Brian, I, we can talk about this later. It, it was not in there. Well, it's public now. So It is now, but yeah. at the time. Let's get it over with. At the time, <clears throat> it, it was a piece of information that people wanted to be able to see that wasn't available. Um, and then the I last thing I respectfully disagree. It was in the back of the warrant. No, it wasn't. Not the exact thing that you're talking about. Not the exact breakdown. There was a breakdown that was similar, but it was it was not the exact breakdown that was read in the motion. Believe me, there were three of us back there trying to find it, and it wasn't there. Anyways, conversation yeah. for another day. Um, so the last thing, talking about defining terms and anticipating questions, um, one of the things that was promised before the select board meeting on, was May 24th, whatever it was, 28th, and then at the select board meeting, I said, I thought there was going to be a discussion of what it actually means to have an omnibus budget. And it was said, well, we're not ready. We're going to do it at the run-through. And at the run-through, it wasn't done. And I said, when it, where's the discussion of what it means to have an omnibus budget? And they said, oh, well, we're not ready. We're going to do it at town meeting. And then town meeting came, and there was no discussion of what it meant to vote an omnibus budget there either. And there's a few of us in town that are super concerned um, about what the omnibus budget actually means functionally. Um, and you saw the three select board members stand up and say, the way things happen this year, we're going to do it differently going forward. And that had to do with the omnibus budget. Um, and there was even a question that was asked um, 
that like how could you deficit, how could you pay these facility salaries if you didn't actually have any money? Um, and there was a simple answer to that question, but it, it involved talking about the omnibus budget, and it didn't get addressed. So um, I certainly would like to see an actual official statement, which I've been promised multiple times, explaining what happened in fiscal 23 um, in terms of the omnibus budget and the municipal, um, Massachusetts Municipal Appropriation Act of 2016, explaining how those two things connected with how the fiscal 23 budget was actually implemented. Um, and because that also feeds into interdepartmental transfer policy, which the select board discussed on Monday, but it doesn't seem like they're going to actually bring before you guys, um, which I think is, is a problem because it, that policy represents, um, in my opinion, a dilution of your influence on the budget because basically that omnibus budget says that whatever budget you guys put in place and that we vote at town meeting, we, I bet I, we do not place. Well, the budget that budget. you guys put on the warrant. Period. Okay, the budget that gets put on the warrant that's recommended by you guys. We recommend. Okay, there we go. Two okay. very different things. Yeah. Fine. Very Fine. different things. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. The budget that you recommend and that more importantly the town votes. We are the, with the omnibus budget. We are actually only voting the forty million dollar bottom line, and that with the omnibus budget, there is complete flexibility to move things around as ever we want to. That's not. That's, that's simply not true. Not true. This Why is this is one of the problems. <laughs> I mean, there was point, just a whole you're, dissertation of your information. Fixating on the word omnibus, which means nothing. Okay. Well, that's what the term is that you keep using work to refer to the way we passed the budget for the last two years. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that the misunderstanding is that the word omnibus means nothing. You passed a budget, and the budget is subjected to the Municipal Modernization Act. Transfers can only be made in accordance with the Municipal Modernization Act, and that's what we've done for the last two years. And that was explained at the time. Yes. Yeah. And at the select board. It's, yes. It's been explained. I'm sorry, it's not the answer you're looking for, but that but is the answer. But it's been explained, so to, so to say. I don't know. So I have spent hours trying to get to the bottom of this issue. That, you're not listening then, because I'm hearing I'm hearing the explanation. I heard it at the selection meeting, at the um, town meeting. They did not explain why it was possible. Yes, they did. The, the, the act that, that Brian just told you, it's been done in accordance with the act. Now, from what I understand, the selectmen want to tighten it up so that it's not um, appearing to be, it, it, it's a matter of the, the flexibility. The, the advising consent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. That's, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. tired. Yeah, no problem. Problem. So can you explain to me what's the, so I want to know how much you understand about this. So two years ago, <laughs> could they have deficit spent the facilities department by $200,000? Yes. yes. Since 2016, when the Municipal Modernization Act was passed, you could do that. Right. My understanding was you could only, you, the omnibus budget allow, is what allows you to deficit spend no. the salary. No, you're using See, the word know. omnibus inappropriately. Right. And that's what's happening, the word omnibus off the table. So, it yeah. won't even so, appear in the law. That's I, the word that you yeah. can use right. The omnibus budget is only the operating budget. The word omnibus means inclusive of. Therefore, this is the operating budget of the town. Okay, so don't get confused that it has any magic to that word. Okay, but everything about a town budget is now regulated by the Municipal Modernization Act, which changed what you could do and what money you could move prior to, you know, prior to you had the 3% limit, and all some other, they couldn't move money between payroll and things. And when the omnibus, uh, when the, excuse me, I looked at it myself, when the Municipal Modernization Act was passed, it dropped those standards so that you could move money. So, and we can. So, and so we do. So I'm going to, so, so what I'm going to put on the table on this one is you know what? We've got legal counsel, we have them give an opinion on it. We can discuss that then at the next meeting. I've just been, I've been trying to get a written so. statement on this and a clear statement on this because so we'll get we'll get legal counsel to actually do that and define it. 
I, I don't think that's within our jurisdiction. But <laughs> it's, it's not within request. our role as a board. Yeah. But if we would like to make a recommendation to the board of selectmen, we'll make, we that, recommendation. make that recommendation. We will make a recommendation to actually get a definition there. So, all right. Um, moving on to the next item, I wanted to talk briefly about monthly like reviews because we we've not done those historically, at least not while I've been on the committee. And you know, probably starting in September timeframe, you know, we'll be able to have July numbers, right? You know, so we don't want to do it in August because we don't know when those numbers are going to come in. So uh, I'm uh, going to put forth uh, for discussion to the committee about, you know, once a month, probably the first or second week, we'll, we can determine what that looks like, is that, you know, we meet as a group to actually go over, like, performance, you know, of how departments are performing against their budget. It also will give us a little bit of headwind going into the budget process because, I mean, you got September, come December, departments are going to start beginning to work on budgets for January. So, thoughts around that? I think it's a great idea. It's something that makes a lot of sense. Um, giving more context, Brian, uh, for the past year and a half, essentially, has been sending out monthly reports showing our ledger. And to get a de departmental um, sort of view on things will be a lot helpful. Uh, very, excuse me, very helpful in understanding the bigger picture of things, like Mark was saying, and specifically where the needs of that department are being driven in the year. So when we, they come back to us in during budget season, we're not starting from scratch and trying to understand what was going on with them during the year, mm -hmm. what are their needs that are new, what are some old needs that are rising up again or falling off, and we can make a more informed recommendation uh, I completely agree and you know for you know if, if you guys need to know like what departments you're set up for liaison I can get that back out to you if you don't remember but you know part of being the liaison through that is like working with those departments through this year right being able to understand their operations and then you know with you will be the liaison with those groups through budget for 20 Oh my god 2025 is that is that gonna be the year mm -hmm. yes you know and then you know in 2025 when we start the new fiscal year july we will readjust liaisons at that point but i feel like it's important to have some consistency with these department leaders at least through this year so are we we're staying with the same assignments we have already? yeah yeah they're carrying on yeah from we'll carry year. that through like through their operating performance this year be there for their budget for 2025. And then in July of 24, we'll do a reassignment for that next year. Are we looking to have like these on the reports of these, the review meetings that we're doing before, so like we'll reach out to our? That is correct. I'll okay. talk with Brian and we'll put together kind of a schedule for okay. that. Yeah, absolutely. In hand up, that means we're including myself. We're all going to have to be more proactive in, in, in talking to people. So. That's correct. Yep. <laughs> yes. So, any questions, comments around? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. I, would, uh, <clears throat> I agree that it's a great idea. <clears throat> I would put forth a suggestion um, depending upon. Uh, how early into the budget year we are exact you know example yeah. July August September um, to let those departments gain a little traction so I think yep. that my suggestion would be the first meeting be in October uh, to discuss how Q1 went for everybody July August and September so they can gain some traction of three months of relative data and performance I think that there may be some departments that we come to them in September <coughs> maybe some not all but they, they may they may have not spent money they may have already spent their whole budget or they may so i just think from a quarterly perspective i think it would be good because that also sets us up for october november december so you'd also have the opportunity to speak to those liaisons for two quarters in a row when we really get into the meat of the, the, the budget but i i the premise in of itself is i i highly agree with i can i can agree with that and you know like julie we can talk about like when numbers are available and stuff like this to be able to work on a schedule Okay, all right. Any other questions, comments around that? 
<coughs> would it make would it make more sense to do quarterly instead of monthly? I'm trying to think timing wise. I mean, technically, we're almost going to be kind of quarterly, to right. be honest. <laughs> right. When is fall time? We haven't said the date yet. <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm, I'm aiming for October, but it will depend upon when the plans are ready. We're still putting together numbers and plans, and we just got the go ahead from the DEP, uh, the DEP to do the testing. Uh, they, they have finally approved the testing protocol. But we went through literally a month of, well, maybe we want to do it this way, and maybe we want to do it that way. Which is like, make up your mind. Um, and so uh, we finally got approval like three weeks ago, and they're about three months behind. Um, so we're now putting a lot of pressure on Beta to come up with some hard numbers um, and give us a timeline so that we know what we're going to be doing. Um, it's, it's frustrating. We know that we need to, to build this plan. It's frustrating to not know how much. Anything else from the committee? All right. So I will entertain a motion at 741. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman, to adjourn the meeting at 741. All right. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries.